Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. We have a client who attended last week with severe tinnitus in their left ear. They'd previously had earwax removed many, many years ago using irrigation and they found that the procedure um, exacerbated their tinnitus. So for anyone who doesn't know what tinnitus is, tinnitus is typically described as a ringing noise which originates within your ears or your head but it's not always a ringing noise it could be any noise actually that originates within your ears or your head that is not due to an external stimuli so it's not you're hearing the ringing of a, a church bell uh, when you've got a church next to you and it was that that particular noise it's many many different causes Tinnitus can also, uh, can also be what we call pulsatile, so you can, it's, it's a rhythmic um, pulse, it can, can be cardiosynchronous, so it can be linked to your pulse or your heartbeat, and there's many, many causes, but one of the main causes of tinnitus is noise exposure, so if you can all remember when you're um, in our earlier years, when we're, oh, we still may do, and it's, well, probably not in this current climate though, when we, we go to a nightclub or a loud, noisy bar, and when you leave the bar, your ears can sometimes ring for a few hours, even a couple of days. So tinnitus can be uh, caused by noise exposure. And when you perform microsuction, microsuction can be quite noisy. It can peak over 120 decibels, which is extremely noisy. Um, even if you have your ears irrigated, so if you have your ears irrigated as a, a mechanical um, pump, and that can be quite noisy in the ear. Um, so for me, I wanted to avoid microsuction at whatever cost here. And fortunately, there was a, a big opening at the top, the roof of the ear canal. So I just used a Jobson horn to delicately get in and behind the wax. Now this wax is quite, um, it's a good consistency actually for using a Jobson horn. It's not too wet, it's not too hard. It's almost got like a fudge-like consistency. So it does stick to the ear canal at times and uh, when you're trying to lift it off the canal wall, you just have to be careful because I don't know the thickness of this layer of wax against the canal wall, so we don't want to be applying too much pressure through the wax and then making contact with the canal wall, which would be very, very uncomfortable. Therefore, I'm just being cautious and just taking it nice and slowly, taking layer by layer. It's almost like a, an onion, you're just removing layer by layer. So you can see the majority of the eardrum there. So this wax is extending probably halfway into the ear canal, so some of it where I am now is on the bony portion of the ear canal, so the outer third of the ear canal, it's cartilaginous, it's semi-flexible, semi-sensitive, we can apply some pressure on that, but on the bony part we're going to be very careful because it's uh, just a very thin layer of skin adhered to, to, to the bone that makes up the ear canal, um, so you're going to be very cool, care, careful and cautious. And again, just with the and horn, just getting a good depth perception with the endoscope as well, just following that in nicely. Don't be working too far away because you lose a bit of depth perception. And you can see it's stuck to the base of the ear canal. But you just keep slowly but surely manoeuvring it away and off. So this type of wax can almost be like... Um, uh, imagine some butter uh, or some Nutella, some chocolate spread, but it's got the same colour. And you can inadvertently just spread it uh, across the base of the ear canal because it's got that fudge-like consistency. In a moment, you're going to see that I'm going to rotate the Jobson horn 180 degrees and just where the entrance of the ear canal is on the posterior canal wall, so on the right-hand side, the back part of the ear canal, I'm going to just gently lift it off the canal wall slightly and then revert back to the same technique that I'm using just to extract the fudge type of wax. So the purpose of uh, rotating the Jobson horn 180 degrees, uh, what we're trying to do is get in behind the wax and the canal wall and at the entrance we're far more comfortable doing that because we know we're on the cartilage portion we're not going to cause the patient any trauma or pain or discomfort oh I think I've probably done that already I do apologize so that technique you've probably seen me before doing it so I'm just uh, mopping up around the edge and you can see the cilia is there at the entrance of the ear canal so they're the little hair hair strands, they're there for a reason, they help filtrate the air, uh, they also um, 
help trust any foreign uh, bodies, particles, dust um, from entering the ear canal. Uh, and these hairs also secrete um, sebum, which is an oily substance, which helps to protect um, the ear canal, uh, the skin from drying and cracking. And it also helps secrete um, the ceremonious glands, which is like a sweat, sweat type gland. Um, there's a little furuncle at the top of the ear canal, you may have seen that, so it's just a small pimple, it's nothing to be concerned about. I hope you enjoyed that video guys and having a lovely weekend and I shall speak to you all soon. Bye!